Hey, today really excited, gonna be talking about uh, high density planting. We're planting multiple trees in a small space which works really well for the average home gardener like myself. Um, you see them here, we're in our front yard test orchard and that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Fruit trees, nine of them, this close? Aren't they gonna die? Isn't the fruit gonna fall off? How do I have all this stuff right in one place? How do I keep it pruned? Blah, 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 blah. So there are a few tips when it comes to doing high density planting like this. Like here I've got a pomegranate, here I've got apples, over here I've got some stone fruit. And how does this type of thing work? So a few things that'll help make this work for you. One, put all of the trees that you're gonna have in a single planting, have them be the same species. So in this planting right here, I've got three apples. They're gonna be working together, the rootstocks, the similar rootstocks. Over here, I've got stone fruit um, that are doing that. In the space where you can fit just a single car, I've got right now nine different fruit trees that have been productive every single year that I've done it. Another is uh, pruning. You'll notice that these are really small. In our front yard, this has kind of been our test orchard. We have, uh, prune trees so that they, as you can see, they're kind of smaller. They're also a little bit shaded by some of these trees and so that keeps them kind of naturally a little bit smaller. The idea here is that I'm not going to let these grow any taller ever than I'm able to reach and uh, so pruning has, has to do a lot to do with your desired height. Okay, so this is a wonderful example of how to do, how to start your canopy really low. This ghost apple here, I'm still I'm letting these four new trees mature in the pots before I plant them. Um, this ghost apple was probably six and a half feet tall. The width was, went straight up. And what I did was I cut it off right here to encourage the, this lower growth. You see how it's just really coming out? Look how beautiful this looks. So balanced, it actually looks better than I thought that it was going to at this time. Um, and so it encourages this lower growth to branch out and that's what we're gonna build our low, our low canopy off of. Same thing goes with the uh, emerald drop, pluot, the pluary, and the uh, cherry back there. Pruning has, has to do a lot to do with your desired height. Not paying attention to the rootstock, but just uh, pruning, not letting them go any, any higher than you want them. If, you, if I want them to stay down here, I can prune them down here. If I want them to get taller, I'll just let them grow out a little bit more and be looking out for structure. Now each of these trees, normally when you go to a nursery, you'll see a stick that's going straight up with all of these, all of these branches coming off of it. Um, what we've done here, we, because we're wanting to keep the canopy low and started low, is that we've come in on each of these things and when we first planted them, we cut them down to about knee high. Now you'll see this is a really obvious one, for example, down here. See here, this is where we cut the original and this existing trunk that's kind of spread out here and created a canopy really low uh, was one of the original buds, uh, one of the smaller, smaller you know, branches that was coming out. Same thing here, you'll see our initial cut here. And you see that everything else is branched out. Uh, you can also tell that the style of pruning here is like an open center pruning, which uh, for the sizes that we're dealing with are really convenient and fine. Same thing goes here, original cut, but everything else, look how strong this is. This is really wonderful structure right here, really solid. And uh, it's gonna support a lot of good strong fruiting. And it's gonna be high, low enough where I can start reaching it from <laughs> reaching the fruit from knee high to as high as I can reach. I'm never gonna have to bring a ladder out here. Now another thing to consider with keeping these fruit trees small or manageable in this type of setting, a close planting setting, is fertilizer. I'm making another video which will be accessible for you. Um, but fertilizing your trees with a low nitrogen fertilizer is key. Uh, that way the nitrogen is what ends up uh, causing a lot of that vigor and a lot of that growth and by having a, a, a fertilizer that's low in nitrogen, high in potassium, high in uh, phosphorus, will uh, support root growth, fruit and flowering, but to not have all of that explosive boom of green that just makes these trees take off. If you believe it, these trees, because of pruning and because of location and because of fertilizer, are six years in the ground, but none of them are dwarfing rootstocks, not one of them. Not these apples, not these uh, stone fruit back here, not a single one is on dwarfing rootstock. They're on full size, and so these could theoretically grow 30 feet tall. Um, 
you know, if they were out in the open and just left to grow to themselves. Uh, this pomegranate, uh, as you can see, this has probably been the most vigorous and I've had to come off and, and cut off the top, but pruning, pruning, pruning is key to this and you can do it. So you might be wondering about the distance with each of these trees. What, what we're essentially doing, and I'm gonna talk about this, this is uh, based on uh, Dave Wilson Nurseries, uh, what they call their backyard orchard culture. And the idea here is that for the home grower, for the person who's just growing like I am for my home, for my family, and maybe some neighbors, um, I don't need commercial yields. I don't need uh, 900 fruit coming off at a tree at one time. And oftentimes these fruit will come off within a one or two week period. So rather than having 900 of one kind of fruit come down all at one time, I can plant three different varieties. And there are a few things to consider here. One is successive ripening. You want these things that uh, this Anna apple, for example, is going to be ready to harvest at the end of June or early July. Um, over there I've got a Fuji and a Gala that are gonna then successively ripen after that. So in the space where I would have one tree normally, one fruit tree, and I have three different cultivars or varieties, and that's gonna make it so that rather than having again 900 of one kind of apple, I'm gonna have apples that I can reach that are not gonna overwhelm me. Maybe we'll have 50 apples on this little small Anna apple, for example, we may be still flowering, but we've got maybe 20, 30 fruit on this little tree, even after it's been thinned. And so what that's gonna enable us to do is to have in the space of one, one tree that gives us all this fruit at one time, we're gonna be able to have them successively ripen. This, then that, then that. So if we're talking about successive ripening, we've got uh, four different stone fruit here. We have a nectarine, an apricot, a uh, late uh, peach, it's a Fay Alberta, and a May Pride peach. You see that thing has already leafed out and has fruit that's solidly growing on it. The May Pride, that's a very early variety. Uh, whereas you've got this nectarine, uh, you may notice here that the buds are just starting to swell. Um, it's not quite zooming in, focusing here, there you go. These things are about ready to pop and ready to bloom. So I bet you come out tomorrow and I will see some uh, flowers coming out here. This is the idea that you don't have to get all of your fruit all at one time. You get some variety all in the space where one tree would normally be planted. Yeah, about two and a half, three feet on center here uh, with the trunk to trunk. So the idea is that in this space, in the space of these trees, uh, you're gonna have them grow instead of one, just think of this in the space, this is where one tree would grow. You're gonna treat each of these trees as though they're like limbs coming off of the same tree once these start growing and growing into each other a bit. And that way you're gonna prune it and treat it as though each of these different varieties are different limb coming off of the tree. And that's what enables you to have some close planting like this. Here's an example of another uh, high density apple planting. It's, it's in the, again a great example of successive ripening. Here's this Dorset golden apple. Look at this. This is the beginning of April, and look at this fruit set on here. This is gonna be ready to go at the end of May. Um, we start picking fruit off of here. Then over here, we've got, I think this is a Gala Fuji, let's see, Fuji apple here. And see how this has just uh, been leafing out a little bit. Uh, flowers are about ready to, ready to uh, burst out here. And then we've got a Granny Smith, which is a late variety. Gonna be ready sometime probably in September. So we're gonna have fruit in May. Um, probably around uh, August or so, and then September, October with Granny Smith. And planted about uh, two feet, two and a half feet on center, these three nectarine trees, again, successively ripening. Over there, the Arctic, uh, Arctic Star is our earliest variety. That's going to um, produce, uh, I think, in June. And um, then we've got this Double Delight Nectarine and this uh, Arctic Glow. And so each of these is going to give at different times. Um, and you may also uh, notice that we planted the earliest ripening to the north. And so we want it to grow and get lots of sun as it's leafing out and growing. And then uh, next, uh, the idea is that we don't want the one in front of it, the one that's southern facing, to shade out the ones behind it. So we want uh, the earlier varieties to be further back to get the first chance and so that way when this starts leafing out this double delight starts leafing out it's not it's it's going to shade it out a little bit but that tree will have already had a whole lot of opportunity in the sun so we always plant if we're going to do a, a planting of three we're going to put, put the earliest variety to the northeast or then just to the north actually because there are three of them then the second variety i'm going to put to the west uh kind of northwest and then i'm putting south 
really anything that's, that is going to be the latest variety is going to be south. Um, so that's going to be the last one to, to leaf out and that's going to obstruct the others the least. Um, the others are going to be have already done a lot of their growing before this thing ever even potentially causes an issue. I've had to cut these back so massively I shouldn't and put a picture of what these looked like last year before I really brought these back to make them a little more bushy and less leggy. High density, doing high density planting here with citrus as well. You notice here there are a couple of orange trees, but this is gonna successively ripen. Here we've got a, uh, a Turaco blood navel orange, and this thing is growing really well. This is gonna give us winter fruit, and then here's a Valencia orange right next to it. And so that is going to give us fruit uh, more of more of the summertime later months. So when this thing is done, this should be coming right on. We're going to allow them to successively ripen. We'll have 100 fruit from each tree or something like that. Even when they get bigger, maybe 150. And in that space now we get variety. We get uh, successive fruit. So we have fresh fruit throughout a whole longer growing season. Um, and the thing is, is that it's actually really manageable with very little oversight. So the concepts in this video are really near and dear to my heart. This, that front yard orchard, the test orchard that you saw is what got me started in fruit trees. Uh, I was watched these Dave Wilson nursery videos uh, with Tom Spellman and how to do this close planting and I thought I could do that. And I did. And six years later, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, I've been able to grow in confidence. I was able to get those trees and some of the benefits were that it didn't take a ton of space. I wasn't devoting my entire yard. It was like a test ground for me where it gave me the confidence to then go and plant uh, an orchard 40 times as big or however big that is uh, with 50 some trees. And so I um, want to uh, want to encourage you if, if you've got a little bit of space and you can take those principles and put them, to, put them into practice, I think you're gonna be surprised at how easy and accessible fruit trees are for even the backyard guy. So until then, happy gardening.